Good. Okay, very good. So welcome to our program, 60 Ideas in 60 Minutes. You know, this came, this was a 3 a.m. idea. And for how many of you do you have 3 a.m. ideas and you go, oh my gosh, I've got to do something about this, right? Yes. So this was a 3 a.m. that I said, okay, I am going to take action on this. Because... Not me, I'm working with Tara. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, okay. You know, I forgot who was in the room for a moment. That's right. That's right. But may I say, very good point, Kimberly. May I say that what I do is I have a notebook by the side of my bed and I write things down and then go back to sleep. So nothing is going to Im Im impede my good sleep. So Tara, that's, that's good. Good catch, Kimberly. Appreciate that. That's the sisterhood, right? Okay. So here we are, 60 ideas in 60 minutes. And I'm Kathleen Caldwell, founder of C-Suite Networks, Women's Coaching and Consulting Council. I am a coach's coach. I'm all about coaching. I am excited about coaching. Love it because I think the gap between where we are, where we want to be, success, higher income, higher impact, all the buzzwords you're familiar with is coaching. So let's get ourselves coached up. Okay. And, you know, before we jump into our awesome program today, I, I just love to do a big shout out to Dr. D. Holstein Vandervolk. She was our speaker on the power of authenticity. And if you were at that program, give me some sparkle fingers here. It was awesome. Yes. Big shout out. The replay has been up. You can see that great replay. And of course, our very own Christina DiGiacomo as well. Boy, that was a great program. The Age of Insight. Whoa. We were having so many insights that it was like we were popping popcorn, weren't we, ladies and gentlemen? It was so fun. Really, really great. Thank you, Christina. Really great program. That replay is up as well. And then our program earlier this month, because it is the month of love, right? And give me a little love uh, emoji in the chat. Yeah, or in the screen. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Great program about love your LinkedIn was really, really terrific. Um, uh, Deb Creer and Carol Kammerer. Really, really great program. That was super good. Whoa. Did we learn some new things about how to love our LinkedIn? That was really tremendous program. And you can get all the replays either through a C-suite network um, newsletter or go to our LinkedIn page because we put everything on our LinkedIn page. You can get all those replays. So there we go. Okay. And then to set the stage, and I think I'll take a deep breath. Who needs a deep breath today? <sighs> yeah. I know that for all of us, just taking a deep breath, getting our self-centered to talk about our awesome values. We so believe in relevancy, reach, reciprocity, respect, and we have in the Women's Coaching and Consulting Council, we love men too. So we're glad all of our men are here. We have a we first mindset and value system where we're all about co-acceleration and collaboration, not competition, because that's like all that's old school. We're all about working better for a higher good. And in that, you have this halo effect on yourself and others because you get to be in the great afterglow and during glow and before glow of each other's great ideas and great, great beingness, because you're all just awesome, awesome people. Okay, and then the Women's Coaching and Consulting Council, we're going to have a designation very soon. You can be an official C-suite network coach, designated coach. We've got advanced learning that's coming to you. Corporate organizational best practices about how to be an excellent executive coach, how to set up group programs, membership programs, joint ventures, alliances, all kinds of ways to advance and excel in your coaching practice or your consulting or your speaking or your authorship, whatever your jam is, we are the place to be. And then finally, you know, this is a theme that we talk about a lot in our council is, you know, with this COVID pandemic, we like the world, we've been kind of in our cave. I don't know if you've been in your cave a little bit, give me some sparkle fingers here. You know, we've been all masked up for so long. And the time is now for all of you, for all of us to come out of the cave, step into the, the sunshine. And if you're here in uh, the Midwest, 
You're stepping into some snow right now, and we're cool with that but stepping into the light of the fullness of who you are and shine your light because the world needs us right now more than ever before, okay? So if you agree with that, give me some amen, yes, 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 something in the chat so I can confirm that you are with me on this. Yeah, the world needs our light, okay? So thank you. And you know our whole goal today is to bring you new ideas that you can take action on and activate. That's the whole goal. You know, an idea without an action plan, well, you know, okay, great. But all of these ideas we promise, our esteemed faculty have been thinking about this, planning about this. They could spend hours in this program, but we wanted to have it be fast paced and a way to have five ideas in four minutes. So if you're able to download, you could go earlier in the chat and you can see if you can download our Canva document, feel free, give me a little thumbs up if you can follow along. If you want to follow along, you don't have to with our little action guide. Yeah, our team put it together and I think it looks pretty darn nice. So with that, Did you say we it's in the are going to... Yep, it's in the chat. Thank you. Would somebody like to copy that and put that into the chat? right here i will do that again yes let's just go ahead and do that yep here's the um the um activation guide yep thank you good so Perfect. we're going to move around our program a little bit trisha ben our wonderful coo excuse me our uh, our president and ceo of you know she's had a title change here folks ceo of c-suite network is going to come to the program about 45 minutes into the program so we're going to switch up the program just a little bit and have trisha go next but wondering if <clears throat> kimberly would you like to jump in and maybe start us off because we're going to start with our action guide and kind of go through each of the women one at a time and what i'm going to do is put up your your uh, points, Kimberly, and then you could just have our group, we could just follow along. You don't need to do anything other than just, we'll just be following along. Does that work I'm for you? i set my timer, right? <laughs> okay, yep, yeah, and I've got a timer here. Okay, so All right. anybody want to be a co-timer? Well, we, I don't think we need a co-timer, do we? Yes. We'll be good. Oh, we're good. And okay. folks, this is our first program doing this. So you're going to grant us a lot of grace today, aren't you? <laughs> Could we get a little grace from you here? Yes, thank you, thank you. A little grace, a little fun. Okay, so Kimberly, I'm going to just show the screen and pull up your marvelous points, okay? How's that? All right. So would you, while I do that, tell everybody about who you are and give us a little introduction. This won't count towards your four minutes, okay? Sure. Yeah, thanks. Sure. My name is Kimberly Roush. I'm the founder of All Star Executive Coaching. I've been doing this for almost 15 years now, which just kind of blows me away. I still pinch myself that this is what I get to do every day. Prior to that, I had spent 14 years in, or 22 years, I'm sorry, in public accounting. Uh, I was a national partner at KPMG. And when I finally got an executive coach myself, when I got promoted into a very intimidating national role, I uh, worked with him and he helped me see that the part of my job I loved was all about coaching and developing and mentoring and particularly challenging and inspiring people. And now I get to do that every day. But I have to tell you, it was pretty daunting to, you know, go from being this national partner to global firm with resources at my fingertips to starting my own one man business, right? One woman show. <laughs> and it was daunting. And thank God I was still working with my coach during that time period. Um, because a lot of what he's, you know, a lot of what I have here to say in my five minutes is, or four minutes is, is definitely related to that. Super so, good. We... Thank you, Kimberly. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so couldn't, let's just do, can everybody see the screen and um, you have some incredible points, Kimberly <laughs> and the tie and the podium is yours, my dear. Let's take yourself off mute and let's give Kimberly a little uh, applause here for starting off our program. How's that? Good. Thank you. Woohoo. Yeah. So here we go. Four minutes, girl. Yay, Kimberly. Woo Yay. Thank you. So, so number one is just start coaching. You know, if you're new into this, 
and you're following a passion and, and you've got the gumption to go for this, then my guess is that you're getting a lot of energy when you're actually doing what you love. And there's going to be a lot of starting a business that is not going to give you the energy you love. It's hard. It's scary. It's, you know, and you need to get your cup filled. Your cup is going to get filled by doing what you love. So get out there and coach. My one number one thing my coach said to me when, when I first started, he said, look, your website's going to come along when you need to have a website and your, you know, glossy, pretty marketing thing's going to come along when you have to have it. Um, but start with what's giving you energy. And then that's going to give you the energy. That's going to be what gives you the, you know, the motivation and inspiration to get the other stuff done. So don't feel like you got to have everything perfect and, you know, ready to go before you start coaching. Um, you know, it's the second one, find a need and fill that need. Um, when I started my business, it was 2008. There were, you know, lots of executives in transition and they were going through what I call identity theft. They'd lost their jobs, their title, their company, 40, 50, 60 years old, never in their wildest dreams thought they'd be out of work, right? They were that generation. And, you know, I started a group coaching program uh, based on that need and, um, I've served over 3,500 people now. And I will tell you, it put me on the map in my community as a serious executive coach right from the start. I, I like immediately went up to the rank of, you know, the existing executive coaches that had been out there because of doing that. And because of, you know, it was a highly visible need. Um, when you speak, you're automatically an expert, you know, speak wherever you can speak for free if you need to, to start um, for sure to get your, your legs under you speak. There's tons of organizations that need speakers. And here's the thing, you get to speak at a 101 level. Don't feel like you got to have some profound thing to say, because what you know is only available in bite-sized chunks for the people you're trying to talk to. So it's like Mar it's like 101, not 404. If you think of a, a you know a freshman level class versus a senior level class, um, so keep it simple. Um, and then net play, net play, net play, net play is taking the work out of networking. Um, don't have an agenda of trying to close that client. Don't have, you know, an agenda of who they can introduce you to so you can get more business. Uh, just, just see that person you're with in that moment and build a relationship and let them see who you are. And it comes around over time. It's not, if, if you go in with an agenda, of they got to give you something right away you're putting this ick in the energy in the space and it, you're never going to get the relationship, the level of relationship that this is a referral business that you need for a referral business. Um, and last but not least, you know, collaborate rather than compete. Kathleen, you said that earlier this morning, right? You know, there are so many people out here who are one or two people shows their smaller coaching practices. There's so much opportunity to collaborate. Don't do it all yourself. And um, it's more fun when you're doing it with somebody else. And that again, gives you that energy you need as you're creating something and, and to get through all the scaries and all the sleepless nights and all the, <laughs> you know, the times when your energy isn't with you. So those are my five. Excellent, excellent. Thank you, Kimberly. Take yourself, off off mute. Take yourself off mute. Let's give Kimberly a round of applause. Yay. Woo yes, yes. And we're going to do a Q&A at the end of our program today. So we're, we've got a few minutes reserved for that. So be thinking of your questions. And uh, Kimberly, you have a particular point of view about executive coaching. And so that's your expertise. So think about the questions that you have for Kimberly at the end of the program. So yeah, and uh, accounting questions will be taken offline, Kimberly. Is that correct? <laughs> or not addressed at all? So I spent just for those of you who don't know, I've spent the last year doing the accounting and and you know trust risk you know stuff for my father's estate. So I'm accounting doubt. <laughs> That's in another, that's in another uh, capacity. We'll, I got we'll my, I got that. my Wuju salts on my desk today to, to get rid of all the bad energy from my brother. Okay. <laughs> and okay. it happens. Okay, good. 
So in your action guide, you'll see at the very bottom, Kimberly's five points and then her, her abbreviated bio at the bottom, connect with Kimberly on LinkedIn. Okay, good. So our next speaker cannot wait is, you know, you've got your notes here, is of course, Cindy Chosick. Take yourself off mute. Let's give Cindy a round of applause here. Woohoo! Yes, yes. Go, so, Cindy. Yes, thank you. You know, I was hoping we we're going to have a cheerleading section, and I'm so glad about that. You know, because we're we are all about the cheerleading, right? Okay, but we marry that with action steps. Yes. Right. So, Cindy, tell us a little bit about you and jump in to your important points in our 60 minutes and 60 ideas. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, I'm Cindy Chosick out of Chicago. It's snowing here right now. And for those of you who can relate, I am the CEO of So Connected, where I ghostwrite books for nonfiction authors. I also author coach. So I coach authors, similar to, to um, Kimberly, we're both coaches. And I also edit and also speak on mental health. So, um, and I also have a book that I'm an author for called Call to Lead Women's Success Strategies. And my uh, interpretation of Kathleen's email was, what are the five tips that I would give business owners if I were to start my business over again? So the first thing is, even though I've been in business for nine years, it'll be nine years this year, the one thing I wish I would have done from the beginning nine years ago was to write my business plan, my mission, and my values. And the reason for that, it sounds kind of traditional. It sounds kind of unnecessary as uh, solopreneurs uh, or small businesses uh, with just a couple of people, but it really is necessary because it lays the roadmap of what you're trying to accomplish, how you're going to accomplish that, what you're going to do with your money, and also why you're doing it. Those mission and values are so important because every time you make a decision, uh, especially if you're one that gets distracted by squirrels, um, those decisions can be directed with your mission and vision and your business plans. And you could say, okay, it's not in this plan. Let's put it in for a future opportunity. The second thing, and no, I was not paid for this tip either, but if I was going to write a book about building your business, which I may someday, it the first page would be hire an experienced coach in your area who knows, has years of experience on top of what you have. And the last page would be hire a coach in your area that has years of experience on you. End of book. Because it's so important that we have somebody to guide us through. Had I hired a coach, even to invest in my own money for the business, to hire a coach nine years ago, I would have bypassed errors. I would have missed mistakes and I would have saved a lot of money and it's worth it. So uh, a fabulous coach who knows a lot more about the industry and how to build a business um, with you will guide you and get you down the right path in the right direction. The third, the third tip is to keep the expenses leaner than you can imagine. It is so easy to sign up for this program and sign up for this program. And believe me, I have videos on my hard drive that I have never watched. And I've spent thousands of dollars, this is confession time, forgive me, thousands of dollars uh, and videos that I've never even watched because I was so excited about the program. I get to get to it. But my client work and the business work and my family and myself needed time too. So just be very careful with your expenses and have a budget and stick to the budget and wait until you have the money to spend on that program that you want um, because it will come when you can have it. Just make sure you have the money first in your pocket. The fourth thing, join associations in your industry. Similar to what Kimberly said, when you're not playing and you're not going to meet people in the associations with an agenda, but rather being open to what can come out of a relationship. It could be a, a great friendship you develop. It could be a partnership. It could be a great referral source. It could be a great alignment with your business and they could become a client. So you just never know the relationship. So maintain openness 
and sign up for the associations. For instance, I'm in the Nonfiction Authors Association, I'm in the Ghost Writers Association, and I'm in the Authors Guild, uh, and a lot of other associations for other things. But those are the things particular to writing, to speaking. I'm in the National Speakers Association along with the Illinois chapter. And the final tip is to define a niche the, define the niche that you are going to be in. I know it sounds hokey. I know we all combat it. Most of us will combat it at the beginning of building a business, but it is so important because once you know your niche, the niche, the riches are in the niche. And the reason being is because you know exactly who to market to and who your messaging should uh, appeal to and attract and reel in as your client so that you can earn the income that you deserve and live the life that you love. Bravo, Cindy. Yes. Take yourself off mute. Let's give Cindy a round of applause. Yay. Yes. Yes. And, um, you know, follow up with all of our speakers. We've got, uh, they've got tremendous gives for you that uh, they'll, they'll be able to connect with you. And if you, um, you have interest about being a published author, not doing it yourself, doing it in a group program, talk to Cindy if you uh, are interested in getting just being published, talk to her about this, set up a time to speak with her. Our faculty is, we are so darn generous, aren't we, ladies and gentlemen? We're so generous. I mean, we just, we give to the C-suite community and beyond our time, our, our uh, appreciation. And so, you know, we're just, that's our generosity. So very nice. Good. Excellent, Cindy. Thank you. Our next speaker is actually teaching in Arizona today. So Cindy Watson send, sent me a little video that we get to show. And Cindy's gonna do her, her topics on video, okay? So we're just gonna switch over to that. And uh, you know, we're just all about having fun here and doing something interesting and different. So here we go. Go Cindy. Thank you. I love Here it. Here we go. Let's do it. Hello, all you beautiful C-suite women. And thank you so much, Kathleen, for putting on this fabulous fabulous event. It is such a great idea. And I can't wait myself to hear all the brilliant insights from the other panelists. And here are my five quick tips to start a coaching business, because I know we've only got four minutes uh, each, so I'll be get right to it. Number one, at the outset, do the inner work necessary to own your value so that you can charge what you're worth. You don't want to be the Walmart of your industry. <laughs> Our first and most important negotiation is always that negotiation with ourselves, negotiating our own mindset. Because as women especially, we're conditioned from a really young age to keep ourselves small, right? Don't brag on ourselves. Don't get too big for our britches. So give yourself permission to create a brag list. Remind yourself of all that you've accomplished and all you have to offer. And be sure to recognize not only your own value, but the transformation that you're offering your clients. Don't think in terms of hourly rates. I made that mistake. I know a lot of women do. Think in terms of the impact of your offer. Number two, niche down. I was so guilty of avoiding this. Did we lose sound? Need to speak to everyone out there. There is a lot of noise that we're competing with now out there in the world. And if you want to get noticed in all that noise, get specific. The more specific that you get about the discrete audience that you want to serve and what distinct thing that you're offering them, the easier it'll be for those people to find you. You'll build an audience faster with a dedicated, specific target group than if you try to appeal to the masses. Number three, get clarity about your ideal client. Seems obvious, but tied to the last point, not only do you want to get clear about the specific niche that you want to serve, but I really invite you to get clear yourself about the kind of client that you really want to work with. What client do you want to serve? Who would excite you uh, to have to, to serve every day? You want to be working with people that keep your passion alive, that you really truly enjoy working with. Clients who inspire you to be your best self. 
Number four, network with intention to build alliances. I was not great at this at the beginning. I was kind of like nose to the grindstone, get in. And, you know, I felt like I had to be an island in the beginning where I need to figure everything out and I needed to do everything myself. And boy, and that can get really overwhelming quick. So get intentional from the outset about meeting like-minded people, masterminding together, collaborating on projects, seeing how you can help serve each other and building possible affiliate partnerships. Seek opportunities, I'd say, as well to, nego- to network and build those relationships, both with people who are sort of at your stage or even, you know, ideally a little bit further along the path than you can be a great asset, um, but also people who are much further down the path than you. You need both in my view. So I'd say both can bring their own distinct benefits. And when you work together with other people, when you network and collaborate, you're going to move further faster. And number five on my hit list. Always remind yourself that the main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. And that sounds really simple, but it actually takes intention. Don't be chasing every new shiny opportunity. And trust me, if you're at all like me, you're going to be tempted because we get inundated, right, with ads and information insisting that, you know, you just need to do this for your first million dollar launch, or you need to do just that to get those 100,000 followers instantly. I'd say determine the one thing that is going to most move the dial for you in this moment. What thing do you most need to get cash in the door right now? Focus on the one thing that will most move the dial on that and focus your energies on that one thing. And then you just rinse and repeat. What's the next one main thing that will help move me further along? And that's it for me. Five tips in four minutes. I hope you find them helpful. Take care. Wow. Super great. Huh? Very nice. So let's get our, let's get some conversation going here. What are you learning? What's, what are some takeaways here? Because we've got to be able to assimilate this. We've had our speakers so far and there's been some golden nuggets. So take yourself off mute and just give us a little soundbite. What are you learning? What's emerging for you, for, for, from you and for you? For our time together, I think it's Sandra D. I know you. Speaker talked about net play, networking. Ah, isn't that something, Kimberly? Yeah, effectively networking. Yes, thank you, Sandra D. You always have something brilliant to say. <laughs> Jump did, in you see, did you see that I was chomping at the bit to say something? Uh, I think you know I, I'm probably not alone. I know I'm not alone in this room because I know how common this actually is. But that number five. Remind yourself that the main thing is the main thing. There are so many, I mean, I think a lot of times people that go into coaching are high energy people. And that high energy, a lot of times like with me, I jokingly say I'm so ADD, my energy just takes me faster from one thing to the next. And so there are a lot of shiny things. My husband says, instead of squirrel, I say bunny. So there are a lot of bunnies and I'm constantly chasing bunnies and going down the rabbit hole. And then I, I go, what happened to the last two hours? You know, things like that. So I think actually the number five year with Cindy, which has also been said before in a different way, but it's really just focusing on what you need to do that day. And I have learned to really make it simple, just simple. If it doesn't fit, I think Cindy, last Cindy said, if it's not in your mission and your vision, then it's not now. Perfect. 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 Yes. Yes. And, uh, you know, that Stephen Covey quote, you know, I think, and and it's been, as you said, Sandra, it's, it's just been said so many times is the main thing is to keep the main thing, the main thing. And, and then it begs the question, what is the main thing? Right? Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. Good. Thank you. Who else? Because we're going to go over to Tina and Tina has got some brilliant (laughs) points. She's going to talk about next too. So yeah, jump in, please. Yeah, you know what I found really interesting. All of the it, all of the advice was really insightful for me, but there was one sentence that really lit up my brain, and it was, "Start with what gives you energy." Right? I was like, "Oh my god, <laughs> that we're so." <laughs> <laughs> you know, we were so we're so focused on providing and supporting and helping others, but what is feeding our soul? I, I mean, the light bulbs just went off. So thank you and bless you for that, truly. <laughs> Dr. Liddy, that is so fabulous because what we know about you is you have a lot of opportunities, like all of us here. And uh, you know, how do we decide? Yeah. 
and joy. That's a great and, and yeah. excitement and happiness. And uh, yeah, that's great. Whatever lights yeah. us up, right? Yeah. Nice. Thank you for that. Great. How about a couple more shares and we'll get moving forward. Yeah, very good. Susan, we always know you've got something powerful to say. And Carol, aloha. And Diane, hello, hello. What's emerging for, for, for you and Larry and Jerry? Love the consistency of what we're hearing. The fact that they aren't saying it in exactly the same way, but they are all framing it up in a way that it's like, yes, we know what we need to do get focused and really do it. And that's, that's a repeatable message in different, in different words. And I love, love hearing it from the different perspectives. Thank you, Susan. Beautiful. Yes. All right. I'll, I'll blow my hand now. Yeah, <laughs> please. Jerry, thank you. Great. Great. Yeah, um, in next. Yeah. Well, it's just, you know, uh, I used to do like a kind of, okay, what do I feel like working on today? And then of course, so that's just too prone to distraction and shiny things. And it's like, okay, let me just put together a 90 day action plan. And then that way that give me, give me a target in that way. It's like, okay, now I don't have to figure out each week what I'm working on. It's like, I can still, I can still, you know, float things and be flexible, but Hey, now I, I know I need to prospect. I need to da da da. So that helps. Excellent, Jerry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Um, having the right uh, formulaic, the right formula and the right mixture and the right compounds, right? Put together uh, the, the right medicine, so to speak, huh? You know, Kathleen, I was thinking that uh, when Cindy was talking, her first point was yeah. write a business plan and how often that gets skipped, you know, especially for solopreneurs, you know, they think I know who my market is and I know what, I, what I'm producing. And, but it's a great reminder. And, and, and her point was you're doing it more for yourself than for other people. Because I think most people think of writing a business plan as a tool to raise capital. And so if you're not raising capital, you think I really don't need it. But it was a great reminder to do that. So uh, thank, that was a good point. Thanks, Larry. Very, very good. Good. Thank you. And then Diane and Carol, if you would like to jump in and then we'll get going to our next round. And, and by the yeah. way, who's finding this valuable? Give us a little thumbs up here. Woohoo. Yeah, great. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Diane, jump in, please. We cannot wait to hear you, girl. So one of the things that that I I think is actually uh, um, gets in my way is this whole concept of a niche, you know, so like on the one hand, it's recognized like what's going to make you stand out as a coach. And I've been doing coaching for a number of years as well. And so what makes me different? And so I think while I've gone to so many sessions where everybody talks about that, I think it's really hard to also help somebody figure out what their niche is. So, you know, on the one hand, conceptually, I've heard it, it's a good reinforcement. On the other hand, it's like, okay, it's, it's also becomes like that albatross where it's like, oh God, what is my niche? So it's just this whole concept of niche, which I'm still struggling with. <clears throat> Thank you for bringing that up. And, and because how many of you can, are dealing with that or have dealt with that is with so many opportunities, what's the right one? And Tina, perhaps in your, you, you could blend that in into your, your tremendous points that you've got going coming next. Yeah. Very nice. Good. Carol, did you want to jump in or we'll move, we'll move forward. We just have to say we're, we're, we're dealing with a little aloha and en uh, envy. Some of us, right? <laughs> So I'm dealing with an unstable internet, but um, one of the things that um, I thought was insightful was just what Sandra D was um, referring to. And it, it also refers to that the main point is the main point is the main point. Um, that notion that there are so many people with offers that make us think, oh, if we just you know, spent this amount of money, we would have this and, you know, everybody else does. And, oh my goodness, that, that is hard to want to chase the new shiny thing. That's going to make us the new shiny thing. Yes, <laughs> so absolutely. I, I, um, I appreciated that. Very nice. Thank you, Carol. Excellent. Mm -hmm. So let's jump in and, you know, we'll get more conversation going in a moment, but we're going to turn the podium over to Tina. Tina Greenbaum, oh my gosh, from San Francisco, the Bay Area. Welcome, welcome. Tina, would you like to introduce yourself? And then sure. I'm going to get uh, 
our speaker up, uh, your slides up. How's that? Yes, yeah, so all the wonderful things that we talked about the other day, and I have Novocaine in my mouth, so if I sound a little weird, please forgive me. <laughs> no, perfect, uh, perfect, perfect. But um, so I created a program called Mastery Under Pressure. I'm a psychotherapist by training. I'm a psychotherapist by who coaches. So I fit into both categories. And um, just listening to everybody and all the issues that those of us that have been doing this for a while have experienced. And so I'm so excited for you, Kathleen, in terms of being able to pull in um, new coaches and, and people who haven't gone through so many of the expenses and struggles that we all have um, that we hope we hope that we can save people some energy. And to go back to um, Diane, I think it was uh, uh, talking about niche, niches. It's the same thing like, like, what do I wanna do when I grow up? These are not easy questions to answer. And having somebody that can help you pull out the answers from you is really, really helpful. And uh, going back again to um, who started this by uh, um, Kimberly, what energizes you? Who are the people that you, you want to serve? Who, who, who excites you when you see that you have somebody on your calendar? Who is that person? What, you know, talk about them. And, and really kind of, that helps to begin to start the niche. And because if you took each one of us that is on this call, we all have different people that we, that we serve based on who we are and what we're attracted to and what our aptitudes are and all of that kind of stuff. So get yourself from, you know, conversations to have. Um, so let me see if I can see what I said. Um, let's see. Uh, yes. So uh, not too long ago, uh, somebody, I was doing a um, presentation for a founders group. It was, a, it was a, an entrepreneur's lab. And the director of it said, the difference between a solopreneur and a founder is that the founder has a team. And well, again, if I had known that, and people will say, well, I can't afford this and I can't afford that. You can afford more things than you think you have because you have something to give. So a lot of what I did in terms of social media help and this kind of help and that kind of help but was I offered my services. And so we traded and that helped me tremendously. Um, again, I've had a lot of coaches. They were really great in a lot of ways but nobody took me through the analytics and a business runs on analytics. And so I kept saying, I want to run my business like a business, not like a, a therapist that doesn't know what she's doing. That's good at what her profession is, but not necessarily at the business end. So in, in terms of finding a coach, the other thing, again, that I would recommend, not only listening to what they have to say, but ask them for referrals. I have a friend who says she, she won't um, hire anybody without three live referrals of somebody that she can actually talk to and to make sure that that person actually has delivered for them what they say that they, they could deliver for you. Uh, find teachers who you admire. Um, I always kind of look at people, let's say, oh, wow, you know, you've really done something really great. What have you done? Because I want to help, I want to follow that path. Not exactly, perhaps, it may not be exactly my path, but how did you get to be where you are? What are some of the mistakes that you made? And so maybe you could help me not make those mistakes. Uh, network with influencers and other thought leaders. I think other people kind of mentioned that. And acknowledge yourself, your values and your life choices. One of the things that I was deeply, I've been doing this work for 38 years, but in the last five and a half, six, six years is really working on scaling my business. And that has been the most challenging. And somebody said to me, a business strategist said, oh, what's your business plan? And what's your five-year plan? And I, I, I don't know, this looks like the next right thing. So going back to what Cindy says, do it early, get the plan. And what I also had to do at some point is acknowledge how much I actually do know. When you get caught into how many people are doing this and how many people are doing that? Well, how many years have you been doing what you're doing? And you have to, you know, again, acknowledge, I'm really good at this. How much time have you spent studying what I've spent? <laughs> and you know, you may be a lawyer that has all these wonderful things, but you haven't spent those years doing what I've been doing. So as we up-level ourselves, and then that's the person that we want to bring out to the networking, to the all the other things that we want to introduce ourselves to. 
So I think that's that's what I, on my list. Tina, excellent, excellent. And you have so much wisdom and we so appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. And it's just amazing. So take yourself off mute. Let's give Tina a big round of applause. Here we go. All right. Thank you. Thank excellent, you. Excellent. Yes. <laughs> and oh, by the way, I just want to mention to you, Tina, not only she came up with this list, like literally just, um, you know, it was just like past the salt. It was so easy for Tina. And it would took 37 years to come up with it so easily. $40,000 in debt. So there you well, go. That's it. That's it. IRS, well, IRS and bad choices, bad choices with the accountant that I had. So, um, and I'm all out of it. And if I can do it, you can do it. <laughs> so amen. a couple other wonderful things I just want to add. Yes. I have very wise friends. If it's not your genius, it's not your job. So every time I get stuck on something, if it's not my genius, it's not my job. Do the numbers and the numbers will tell you what to do. And the third one is 80% of your time is spent during the week, during the workday on income producing activity. Absolutely. Those three things have helped me um, really, really, really tremendously. Can you put those in the chat, Tina? Sure can. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so who has, if you're, if you're doing a little roster here, how many of you have got at least 60 ideas? Okay, because we know our speakers have given you at least five, and you should have matched each of them with at least two or three um, for, per speaker. So give me a little uh, shout out here or a little sparkle fingers. You're getting close to 60. Okay, good. So I'm going to jump in and I've got my five. Okay, very nice. So, wow, this was such a fun exercise. And so I, I'd, I'd love to also challenge in a good way, each of you to come up with your five top ideas. And maybe you just start writing and you think about the best ideas that have gotten you where you are today. And, you know, write a blog, do a video, do what Cindy did, you know, just record something and get yourself activated on the things that you know for sure. And, you know, just start writing and then just narrow it down to maybe three top things in three minutes. This is something that you can start doing. And of course, when this goes global and it goes viral, be sure to thank the C-Suite Network Women's Coaching and Consulting Council for a great idea to do this. Okay. So my top ideas are that, you know, doing it over again is, as all of you have also said, is get the systems, the strategies, the support, and the sisterhood to start. And most of us, we're going to have to restart. You know, we start and then we restart all the time. So there's no harm in restarting. We can restart at any point in time because no one really knows what's going on behind the curtain, folks, you know? So you get to restart, you get to reinvent, and that's part of the theme for next month's International Women's Day and Week, where we're doing Dare Mighty Things. So that's the theme of next, next month's program. I'll put a little plug in that, is about reinvention. So number two is so many of us, our conditioning as men and women is that we've got to do it alone. If we get help, if we have people assist us, it's a sign of weakness. And if you could relate to that kind of training, give me some sparkle fingers here. Yes, yes. Let it go, ladies and gentlemen, let it go. It's silly to be a she-wolf, lone wolf, try to do it all yourself. Because as many of our speakers said, when you co-accelerate, and I'm trademarking that right in the process of that, when you co-accelerate, you can go further and you can go faster. So lock arms with others that you resonate with and find opportunities to do some partnerships, to do some mailing, to do some events together. It's so much more fun, as many of you have said. Number three, bet on yourself. I really believe the very best investment you can make is in yourself, your education, your business, because I also believe that a business is a spiritual journey. We get to become who we want to become, live the life that we want to become through our business, you know, and so use your business as a spiritual journey. 
And then number four, for all of us, we have places we can go even higher. Boldly step into your thought leadership at every level, your expertise, your thought leadership. What do you know that others may not know? What's made you successful or passionate or excited or qualified? Just step into it. Let go of the uncertainty, the overthinking, the lack of all those things. Just let it go. Number four. Um, and, you know, the thing that I love is, is doing things, you know, the best we can, but getting everything out there. I'm curious how many, for how many of you, you've overthought things, you've done 15 video recordings and never even sent any of them. Can any, anyone relate to that? Yes. And I, I, what I say to myself all the time is SW, 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 who knows what that means. Some will, some won't. So what? Someone's waiting. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's like, hey, this or something better. So what's the self-talk that you're putting in your head to actually think about new prospects, doing new things, trying new things, get more visible on the C-suite network, ladies and gentlemen, just get out there and do it. Raise your hand. I assure you, Trisha Ben and the Leadership and C-Suite Network will call on you. Okay, that's right. And Trisha's here. We're so excited about that. And then finally, I have 41 seconds left. My big philosophy is, and I know this for sure, is that it takes a full year, 365 days, all four seasons to make a major change and have it stick. You know, if you're promised that you're going to get rich in 90 days, you transform business in 60 days, you're going to lose weight in this amount of time, you're going to find the love of your life in one week. Oh, we know that's not going to happen, you know. So use the spaciousness of a whole year to rebuild, recalibrate, re-envision your life and get to work on that. Just use the gift of time, those 365 days. And um, yeah, yeah. And utilizing this time to not only build a business, but also build your legacy. Okay, so with that, I will be complete. And I'm going to turn over the podium to Tara Clancy. And you can take yourself off mute and give me a little woohoo, woohoo. Woo I'll take the woohoo. I'll take it. I love it. Tara Clancy. And then we're going to circle back to our wonderful Trisha Ben. All right. Can you yeah. hear me? Yes, I'm going to put the spotlight on you, Tara. Tara, tell us a little bit about who you are. We want to know yeah. more. Yeah, I am um, the, a, a high performance sleep strategist. And I got to this point kind of reluctantly, <laughs> only because I found out after four decades that I had been living with a sleep performance problem my whole life. And so my goal now is to help people recognize the impact that hidden sleep performance problems have on their daily lives, really to connect the dots. That's what I do on my podcast, the Counterfeit Sleep Podcast. We really provide eye-opening solutions for everyday problems. And that's what I'm excited to talk to you about here today too, um, because uh, as you'll come to see, it's all sort of uh, sleep is fundamental to really everything. So shall I go ahead and get started then, Kathleen? Please do, Tara. Four Alrighty. minutes, young lady. Here we go. All right. Well, I will say, as as uh, uh, somebody said before, you know, start with what gives you energy. The energy is what's critical for me. And so, as you go to scale your business, right? You've you've birthed it. You have grown it. Now you're ready to scale it. I say, think about sustainability. You don't want to scale it, you know, to really build your coaching business up to that point and then have to bury it, right? So as you scale, I recommend sustaining these four foundational elements. Number one, sustain the commitment, right? We get up every morning, we turn that switch on every morning, five days a week. Oh, who am I kidding? It's six and seven days a week, right? I think, in fact, scaling a business was what the Beatles were really singing about when they sang eight days a week. <laughs> But if you end up wired and tired, well, it's hard to sustain the commitment that's necessary for scaling. So what we need is a formula to avoid physical burnout. And we'll get to that formula shortly. 
The second thing that I want you to think about sustaining is the creativity and the dedication that you need for scaling a business. Uh, as coaches and consultants, you know, we work hard at creating and refining our intellectual property so that it resonates with our target audience. And we're dedicated, so that creative piece is always running in the back of our minds, which of course brings us back to that eight days a week idea. But if you end up running low on inspiration and ideas, you lose that creativity and that dedication. And what we need then is a formula to avoid those creative dry spells. And, and it is coming. But first, let's get into the third thing that you need, sustaining the clarity and the focus. We work to develop ourselves as professionals and as business people, and there's so many directions we can go, right? We've all talked about those shiny little objects all over the place. Um, but if you end up spreading yourself too thin, it's in direct contrast with the clarity and the focus that you need for scaling. And if you think I'm going to say we need a formula to avoid losing clarity and focus, you're right. <laughs> but there's one more foundational element of success for scaling, and that is sustaining relationships. We spend our time, we spend our energy making the connections, nurturing the relationships with the people who fill our world with success, which we can define in lots of different ways, right? And that includes the people in our professional lives and the people in our personal lives. Now, if we run out of the emotional bandwidth that we need, those relationships take the hit. And let's face it, losing clients or even losing a spouse through a divorce, that impacts our everything, and including our scaling success. So can you say it for me? We need a formula to avoid losing the emotional bandwidth that we need to scale sustainably. And that brings us to the root of success for sustaining these four foundational elements. What is it? Well, it's the formula. And here it is. It's a simple one. It's the 15-9 sustainability formula. And like I said, it's simple. Each day, have 15 hours when your switch is on and nine hours when your switch is off. Again, 15 hours when you're on and nine when you're off. That means 15 hours each day for your work, your family, your fun, your everything that you do when you're awake, and nine hours for setting yourself up for high performance sleep and actually getting it. And this is important. Of those nine hours, devote the first hour to setting yourself up for high performance sleep. And then the remaining eight hours, you actually spend getting the high performance sleep. When you use the 15-9 formula, you will feel like you have eight days a week to scale your coaching and consulting business. And why is that? It's because sleep is when our brain recharges. And I think we can all agree that a cell phone running on a full battery outperforms a cell phone in low power mode. Everything you do when your switch is in the on position will be better when you have a full battery. So use the 15-9 formula every day when you're trying to scale your business. Wow. Truth bombs, Tara Clancy. Take yourself off mute, everybody. Woohoo! They believe. That's awesome. I love it. Woohoo! My <laughs> goodness. Are we rocking it, ladies and gentlemen? Are we rocking it here? Really rocking great. It. Thank you, Tara. So let's go up uh, very, very nice. And we're going to go up and... Uh, Go up to our wonderful Trish, Trisha Ben, and we're going to get our document to go up here too. Let's do that. So Trisha, would you like to jump on and I'm going to show your slides up on the screen and uh, let's just do that. Let's just get Absolutely. that up. Hi, everyone. Yeah. I'm so thrilled to be here. Yeah. I think you you all probably know me. Um, Jerry, we haven't had a chance to visit, but um, and Rada, uh, great to meet you. I'm Trisha. Um, and I am really, truly honored to be here. I was just in a meeting on a, 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 a really huge new opportunity that we're building within C-suite. And I said, OK, gentlemen, <laughs> Just so you know, I'm leaving at a certain point. So um, that's why I was jumping in when I did. I'll definitely be watching the replay to hear all of the great, 
great pieces of wisdom. So Kathleen, Very nice. to start in. Yeah, let me go in here and your slides are up. Your slide is up with your wonderful five points. Perfect. And uh, Perfect. yeah, so everybody can see. And of course, you know, we've got this downloadable guide that the link is in the chat and you can just download this on, on your own as well. And, uh, but Trisha, we'd love to hear from you. So yes, let's give Trisha a round of applause, everybody. Take yourself off mute, woohoo. Thank yes. you. Thank you so much, Kathleen, for creating this platform for all of us. You know, first and foremost, that's the most important thing is we have this opportunity to share, grow, and build together. Um, and your specific ask, and I think it's just so important, um, is building and scaling our coaching and consulting practices. And so I kind of reordered things a little bit. I've got a book that's coming out with some key things that I think are important in building any business. But when we're looking at coaching and consulting, I wanted to start with the making everyone your chief growth officer. That's critical. And Kimberly Roush, I can't help thinking of you and your story. You know, you go from an enterprise sized organization, and I know what that feels like. I was at three, I was an executive buying, building, and integrating businesses and scaling businesses. And then you go alone. It's a very different thing. So, so I think first and foremost, you want to be thinking about everything from the perspective of how does everyone become your chief growth officer? How do you empower them to understand what you're about, what you want to be able to achieve, what pain points you're solving for, who you want to work with? Those are things that all of us, for example, as one group of chief growth officers can be helping you with. And, 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 and obviously that, that's very much true in terms of scaling as well. You want to align everyone around your mission and the impact you're going to deliver. And I think that is something that is just so critical. And if you're not thinking to that, you're losing out. You're really missing what matters to people. So what is, what is that mission? What's so important that you're going to do, that you're going to be able to deliver, that other people can get on that mission with you, that they, it becomes an invitation where they can't resist being there with you and the outcomes you're going to deliver. And I think oftentimes it's really important that we force ourselves to go there because there's a lot of anxiety with outcomes. Um, a specific example I'll give you, our social team gave me a wonderful summary of what we could do if we amplified through Facebook and LinkedIn our advertising for an event. Fantastic. I say, I love the marketing materials, that's great. What are the outcomes you're promised against? I get back the marketing materials. So I again ask, what are the outcomes? So the outcomes really are how many people will register for that event, not how many clicks and links and views and all that beautiful stuff. And so I think, especially when we're on our own building our coaching and consulting practice, we have to think to what are those outcomes we're delivering? And it gets a little tricky, challenging. Um, we need to focus on what matters. Now, this is critical for all of us. There's a lot of noise. There's noise in our heads. There's noise from people around us. There's drama. There's all kinds of ickiness that can suck us in, pull us down and take us away from what we really wanna be able to achieve. So make sure you are focusing on what matters always. And when it doesn't matter, let it go as quickly as possible. It's not something that's going to help, gone. Um, Fourth, you want to create a business model that supports your mission and accelerates your success and those that you serve. The business model is absolutely critical. Should do, would be nice to do, uh, you, know, uh, when, you know, one day we will, awesome. Uh, but that does not create a sustainable business model. And it's absolutely critical that you are thinking to what your business model is to be profitable in what you're offering and how you continue to scale and grow. Love that topic, by the way. It's one of my favorites. And in C-suite, we are practicing this every day. Um, and finally, build that solid foundation of trust. So who do you go to uh, for that foundation of trust? And in my own notes, I have community, community, community. Um, you know, this is the wolf pack that Kathleen leads and holds space for every day in C-suite network. Obviously, we each have those people we trust for different things, and that's absolutely critical to have those solid pieces of foundation, and especially when you're alone, because you can get caught up in a lot of other stuff that is not productive, not useful, and does not help you move forward and have the impact you want to have and drive that mission that you are promised to. So Kathleen, I think I might even be under five minutes, but that's my succinct 
five steps. Excellent. Very good. Trisha Ben, take yourself off mute. Let's give Trisha a round of applause here. Woohoo! Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. And all of these are in our action guide and very, very, I mean, ladies and gentlemen, this is business wisdom for the ages here. So thank you. And let me just finish up here. And um, we are in the Women's Coaching and Consulting Council. Of course, we love men and we love men to come and join us as well. We are committed to have you be the most strategic and in-demand woman coach, woman consultant in the rooms that are the right rooms for you, okay? Because it's really about time now that we get what we want and get what we deserve. And that's what we advocate for here in the count, in our council. And of course, one of our basic fundamental, you hear me talk about it all the time, it's we're better when we're together. The strength of the wolf is in the pack and the strength of the pack is in the wolf. So let's come together this year. We've got some tremendous programs. I'll just finish up by just doing a big shout out for Susan K. Younger. Take yourself off mute. Susan is going to be our speaker on March the 3rd on Council Day for C-Suite Network. Connection equals currency. Wow. It's going to be a luscious, delicious, and very, very, very lucrative and prosperous topic. How to have relationship strategies, communication strategies, catapult you to hearing what your clients really want, really need beyond what they're just saying. So it's going to be a really tremendous program. And of course, our big International Women's Day, Women's Week, Dare Mighty Things Together, Women's Success Summit. Oh my gosh, our speakers are going to be tremendous. It's going to be an hour and 15 minutes each day, Tuesday through Friday. The registration link is up. And lest you think that we are not having a celebration of men. Oh no, we are. Yes, we are. Save the date. November 17th, save the date, we're going to have our celebration of International Men's Day and creating a world that works for everyone. And we will be announcing our very first GENT Award, Generous, Enthusiastic, Noble, and Tenacious. And I think we know one of the members already. We won't say his name, but his initials are JH. We know he'll be getting an award. We're going to form a committee to provide this nice award, and it's just going to be a lot of fun. So save the date on that. And then, of course, finally, schedule your one-on-one -on -one with me. Let's talk about what the options are for you to come join us in the Women's Coaching and Consulting Council. We want you. Come join us. Get in the sisterhood, okay? So I'll be following up with the link for each of you. And as we finish, what's your biggest takeaway? Because we know you got at least... 60 ideas in 60 minutes from our time today. So I'm going to stop the share. Love to get some feedback from all of you. What's your biggest takeaway from our time together? Love to get your voice in the conversation. How's that? Just take yourself off mute and just jump in. One big takeaway from today. Yeah, Cindy, please jump in. I love Trisha's chief growth. Uh, <laughs> chief growth officers for all the team members. I thought that was genius. That was really good because as I'm building my team, it's it's good to know that, you know, they become, they feel more. And by the way, the other Cindy Chosick is Mark Sanford. He's one of my team members. He's here because Hi, he Mark. built his coaching business too. Um, so uh, yeah, it's, it's just nice to know that we can't, we're not the only ones responsible for the growth. And when we incorporate and include our team members to help accelerate our growth, it, it kind of takes off the edge a little bit, <laughs> the pressure of us all have, of each, like for the owners to take on all the responsibility. So thanks, Tricia. Right on, Cindy. Yes. Very good. Thank you, Cindy. Good. Yeah. Thank you. Who else? Who wants to jump in? Your biggest takeaway from today, Sandra, please. Yeah, uh, there was uh, several takeaways. I've sure. I've heard I've heard to focus more. So that's just going to make me. I wrote notes and I have stickies everywhere to remind me to do eighty percent of money making, no distractions. But I think that what I'm most grateful for is what I discover. So many people do not do, and it was very hard for me to give myself accolades for what I've achieved. Excellent. 
I have found myself in rooms with, um, in particular, I had a situation that happened recently and I realized how much I've grown. This gentleman said, so what is it that you do? And he was very aggressive. And I said, well, I'm a, you know, I specialize in communication and, 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 and before I got anything else out, he said, did you go to school for that? And he proceeded to tell me all of the cred credentials that he has, how many books he's written, what school he went to. And it had nothing. And I, I could have let that crush me earlier in my life. And this time I just found it in music and I went, I'm, I'm using and I went, that's great. Excellent. And I walked away. Excellent. <laughs> like, Excellent. Excellent. But you know, best partner it's, for it's a sensitive piece, you know, it's a sensitive piece to a lot of us. Excellent. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. In, Sandra, to be in affirming communities, right? Yes. Where we affirm our greatness and affirm the journey and the growth. Thank you so much. Yes. What a great, great share. Very Good nice. Point. Thank you. How about some other folks? Yeah, th Kimberly, please. What's your biggest takeaway from today? It's just a reminder that if it's not your genius, it's not your job, you know, and it's kind of funny, like I intuitively do that because I can get really good procrastinating at the things that that aren't my genius. What I really got to remember is to assign it to somebody else, <laughs> get the right resource. So somebody's taking care of it, not just me feeling guilty that it's not getting done. <laughs> Thank you. Excellent. Yes. Very nice. Thank you. Good. Any other takeaways? Yeah, Sandra, please. Welcome. Um, hi, everybody. I, I honestly, Kathleen, your SWs, they're my initials. Um, and I've never heard that before. And I wrote them down. The, you know, some will, some won't. So what? Someone's waiting. I That was just spot on for me today. Really Excellent. appreciate that. Well, Sandra, you're the SW that we want to hear more from. How is that? You're our favorite Amazing. SW. You're our favorite <laughs> SW. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Glad Thank you're you here. Much. Thank you. Great. Good. Good. Any other takeaways before we complete our call, our program? Thanks, Larry. Jump in. You know, uh, I think it, 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 a number of people touched on it, but uh, Trisha said it very succinctly, focus on what matters. Tina also echoed that 80% of your work needs to be on income producing. So I think that that's such an easy thing not to do, right? We get distracted with so many things that seem worthy and important, but it, uh, you know, keep the main thing, the main thing, same idea is to really focus on what matters. And so I think for me, that's a great takeaway. Thank you very, very much. Thank great. All, all the speakers were great. Excellent program. Thank you very much. Yes. Yes. Good. Anyone else before we complete? Yeah. Trisha, please. Yeah. We're so glad you're here. Thanks oh. for rearranging your schedule. We know how busy you are. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kathleen. You know, one thing I think is just so important, and I hear this so often is, you know, on focusing what matters and the, and the, the right people and having that chief growth officer mentality, a lot of times we listen to people who don't who aren't the decision maker. And I think it's just so important, you know, when you listen to the decision maker, not the noise around, you know, we all have people, I mean, everybody has an opinion, awesome. <laughs> but, you know, we need to listen to people who actually have a mandate and a budget to do what we're suggesting. So please do not listen, you know, in terms of your go, no go decisions, to those that aren't in that position. You need to speak to the three to five people who are in that scenario that are friendlies first and then expand from there. It's really, really, really important. I can't emphasize that enough. Um, yeah, it, it, and I've heard that so much recently where I've seen things where, you know, oh, and the second piece of that is the more negative the reaction, awesome. If it's the real decision maker, because then you say why, and they will tell you which gives you exactly what you need to sell. So um, don't be discouraged when the right decision maker with the right mandate and budget tells you that I don't like that. It doesn't work for me because why? <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. Thank you, Tricia, yes. So let's complete our program. I have a request. If you liked today's program, and I think you all did, we're gonna put a post in LinkedIn Give us a little loving in the in the post. Go on and comment on our post. We'll put the replay up. The action guide is going to be av is available right now as a download. Give us a little loving because we will love you back. Okay. So with that, have a beautiful day. See you in two weeks. Have an awesome day. Sixty you, ideas, Kathleen. sixty minutes. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank thank you. Bye everyone. Bye bye.